Hi, I'm Zach, and you're watching another product review from MakeUseOf.com. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Vimble 3 smartphone gimbal from Feutech. The Vimble 3 is a three-axis handheld gimbal with a convenient foldable design that looks pretty comparable to DJI's OM5 model. And with a slightly more competitive price, I feel like a lot of smartphone filmmakers are going to be pretty interested in the Vimble 3. So stick around and we'll talk a little bit more about what I liked and what I didn't like so much about Feotech's latest smartphone gimbal. When you open the Vimble 3, you'll see that it comes with a tripod attachment, which is a nice addition and pretty standard for most smartphone gimbals. A soft carrying case, which is nice, but practically I'm not sure that I'll really use this for storage or transportation much, and a USB-C charging cable. Apart from that is just the instruction manual and an assortment of QR codes to Feotech's various social media channels. The only QR code you'll actually need though is for the Feotech On app, which is in the instruction manual. Now onto the actual gimbal. Just by looking at this, you can probably tell that it has tons of features because on the front, there's three different buttons, a spinning dial, a joystick. On the back, there's two trigger buttons. On the side here, there's a slider and two more buttons. It can all be pretty overwhelming, especially if you know that most of these buttons, if you double or triple tap them, they have a completely different function. But don't worry, if all you're looking for is just basic stabilization, you can do all that without ever having to worry what any of these buttons do, or even downloading the Feutech app. Just by pairing your phone via Bluetooth, you will have access to all of the basic stabilization that the gimbal offers, and you'll still be able to use the joystick to tilt and pan the camera around. As we'll get into, I think it's well worth your time for a little bit of a learning curve to understand what some of these buttons do and how to best implement their features in your filmmaking. Uh, but before we cover what all these buttons can do and what the Feutech app can offer, I just want to cover the other basic functions of the Vimble 3, uh, which as you can see, it is collapsible and it gets to be nice and compact. This is what it looks like opened, so still a pretty compact design. And it has a built-in extension rod, which is only 180 millimeters or a little over seven inches. So not much, but it is better than nothing and it does actually enable you to do a few things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. You can get slightly over people's heads if you're trying to go from above or, you know, shoot down by people's feet for some stabilization to load the ground. So better than nothing, but, you know, still kind of small for an extension rod. The tripod attachment screws into the bottom like so. I think the tripod mount is definitely a really nice addition so you can have stabilized stationary footage in addition to your stable moving footage. At the top of the phone clamp, there's a shiny Feutech logo, which is actually a magnetic strip for some optional attachments if you are in the market for that sort of thing. You can either put on a field light or Feutech even has an AI assisted face tracker. So now getting into the buttons and the app. Probably the most prominent feature on the front of the gimbal is the joystick which feels awesome to use. You can use it to tilt and pan the camera around like so. It's got a pretty good range for panning. You can also tilt up and down. Just below the joystick is a spinning dial that you can use to rack in and out of focus or zoom in and out. And you can swap between those two functions by pressing the button at the center of the dial. Next to the joystick and dial are three buttons. The one on top is for your camera roll. The one on the bottom is to stop and start recording. And in between those is an M button for mode. The Vimble 3 has modes for pan following, tilt pan following, and a few others. I won't cover what each of those do in detail, uh, but just know that tapping the M button will essentially change how your gimbal behaves. Double tapping the mode button will swap from landscape to portrait mode. Opposite of these front facing buttons are these two triggers on the back and they also have a few functions each. Pressing and holding the bottom trigger will lock your phone in place. Double tapping it will reset your phone so that if it's caught in a weird spot, you can just recalibrate it that way. And triple tapping will switch from your primary camera to your front facing camera. The top trigger button can be customized to function as one of the previously mentioned modes that the M button can get you to. And on the left side, we have two A and B shortcut buttons and a slider. The slider can be used to zoom in and out, and the A and B buttons can be used to set focus points either for zooming in and out or racking in and out of focus. 
And inside the app are even more settings and options that you can customize. There's settings for HDR, peak white balance and exposure, there's beautify, and there's tons of different filters to choose from. Some of the in-app features that stood out to me were the gestures. You can snap a photo by gesturing a peace sign or start and stop recording by holding up the palm of your hand. With gesture mode on, your camera will recognize these hand signs and start doing whatever the command is. Apart from the gestures, the feature that impressed me the most was the face tracking capabilities of the Bimble 3. I've got it set up so that you can see here. It's actually pretty impressive. And I can see something like this being useful for if you're conducting an interview or something like that. You can just sort of like hold the gimbal out in front of someone and any subtle movements should be caught or picked up by the gimbal all on its own. In addition to tracking faces, the Vimble 3 can also track objects. As you can see on the footage on screen, while I'm moving around the gimbal quite a bit, the front of my phone is always locked onto the object I'm tracking, which in this case is my camera. So that's a quick list of what you can expect from the Vimble 3 in the Feutech app. But how does it feel to actually use this? Personally, I really like it. I think a lot of that comes down to the joystick for me. I've used a lot of gimbals in the past for phones and cameras, and I've always felt that they were weirdly clunky, like my stabilization was coming at a cost of not having full control of what was in frame. But having a joystick solves all that because I feel like I'm always in control of exactly what I'm pointing my camera at. I'm also a big fan of how compact the Vimble 3 can be when you need it to be. The first day I took this out shooting, it was small enough that I could stick it in the front of my sweatshirt pocket. I think my overall favorite feature and the one that I've gotten the most mileage out of would have to be the AB marker buttons and how they interact with the dial. Like I said, you use the dial to either zoom in and out or focus in and out. Then you can press and hold A or B and the gimbal will remember that axis point that you're zoomed or focused into. Then use the dial again to adjust to a different zoom or focus and then press and hold the other marker button. Now pressing either the A or B marker button will snap your camera back to that zoom or focus point. Using these marker buttons is kind of a necessity if you wanna be uh, racking in and out of focus or zooming in and out with the dial wheel. Uh, the rack focus works okay with the wheel, but the zooming in particular is kind of finicky unless you're using these uh, position markers. So if you're just zooming it out using the wheel, it probably won't be as precise as you want it to be. But if you are uh, setting a point for it to remember on A and then switching to B, you can get some really impressive looking crash zooms. I was really happy with the results of any time I tried zooming in and out or uh, changing the focus anytime I was using these buttons. Now, since we're talking about the AV marker buttons and the dial wheel, I think this kind of segues into what would be my biggest complaint about the Vimble 3. And it has to do with the ergonomics. And not necessarily how it feels in your hand. I think holding it does feel good. And like I said, the joystick feels really good to use. But the amount of buttons I think feels kind of redundant, especially since this slider on the side all that does is zoom in and out, and that's already something that the wheel can do. Same with the top trigger. All of its functions are things that the M button can do. The AB marker buttons aren't exactly out of reach, but the slider is in the way of them. And I think that the design of the Vimble 3 would benefit overall by just taking the slider out and having the AB buttons be closer and easier to reach. Same with the top trigger button. I think it's just a little overcrowded and not really necessary. And lastly, using the buttons to navigate the different functions of the gimbal while you're holding it made me just a little bit nervous because there's no safety strap on the Vimble 3. And I bring up the lack of a safety strap because while you're holding and operating the Vimble 3, the hand you're using to grip it is also the hand you're using to navigate all the different buttons and stuff which not a huge deal, but the Vimble 3, along with many other smartphone gimbals, kind of has a hard time holding onto your phone if it's in a hard case of any kind. If you're a bit braver than I am, maybe that won't bother you as much, but it did feel like a bit of a liability for me to be operating this thing sometimes. My last piece of criticism for the Vimble 3 would be the fact that there will be a Feutech watermark on all of your photos by default. Thankfully, there's a way to turn this off in the menus, but the fact that you even have to dig through settings and stuff to find that and turn it off is pretty frustrating to me. 
So I think the pros that the Bimble 3 offers pretty heavily outweigh its drawbacks. The joystick and the AB marker buttons give you a great amount of control over the footage you're capturing and its foldable compact design make it convenient for basically any scenario and it has quickly become my favorite gimbal I've used to date. Thanks again for watching another product review from makeuseof.com and we will catch you in the next one.